Hey everybody, it's Carlos here from Premier Reviewer and I have a special guest today. It's a friend of mine. I got a chance to meet him maybe about a year and a half, two years ago now. Um, he came down to Florida. I did something I never usually do, which is actually uh, do meetups. <laughs> I got out of my comfort zone and uh, I got a chance to meet him in person. So uh, I am speaking to Mr. Matt Munez. Did I say that correctly? No, you did not, but that's okay. Oh, <laughs> that's, man. Everyone everyone always butcher, butchers the last name. It's actually Muniz, but I Muniz. tell everybody it's Mona's just because, like, it's a lot easier to say. But um, it, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't bother me. But thank you so much, Carlos, for having me on. It has been a couple of years, and I'm glad you did come to the meetup because I got to get to know you a little bit better. And another individual named Thor. Yes. Actually, I haven't spoken to that guy a long time. I hope he's, hope he's doing okay. I see him but, all the time. Um, he comes and gets his haircut. Oh, he gets your haircut from you? Yeah, yeah, he comes by. So. Oh, dude, see, there you go. See, if I didn't meet up with you guys, he would not be getting your haircut from you. There you go, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you you linked us up, man. No, it was good. It was good no, hanging out with uh, both of you. And then, yeah, me and Thor, you know, became friends. He comes to the hair, to uh, the barbershop from time to time, get a chance to hang out and talk. And it's good. It's good stuff. Oh, dude, that's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. So, listen, uh, we're going to get right into it, man. And, um let's just start with your beginnings like uh what got you into making videos on youtube yeah so i mean like i kind of fell into it so i've always been into tech since i was a little kid um and i always thought i wanted to do something in like computer networking so i went to school for tech i built computers when i was small and then one day i was just like you know what i'm working nine to five i'm doing you know desktop support and I have a lot of time in my hands. So why not start a blog? So me and my buddy started pumping out like 11 articles a day, but we were getting literally like 50 views a month. It was just terrible. So <laughs> like this is not going anywhere. But during that time, you know, we started reaching out to companies to, to try and get devices. So LG was like one of the first companies to reply to us. And they're like, yeah, come out to this event and you can get some hands on with the G3. So I went there got some hands on, they sent me the G3 to review, I had it for two weeks, and it was my first time I actually made a video. And the video was terrible, it was like an awful video, I don't recommend anybody watching, I don't even think I have it on YouTube anymore, but, but it was something about making that video that kind of stuck with me, I think it was the whole process of trying to be creative, trying to putting something together, and then like learning this whole idea of editing something. This is the first time I ever edited a video. Yep. So after that, I was just kind of addicted. So um, basically, yeah, the blog didn't work out. I didn't want to do it anymore. My buddy was like, this is not going anywhere. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do YouTube and see where this goes. So I just kind of fell into that way. I was just working an old job, trying new things. And then one thing basically leads to another. And then all of a sudden you're doing something that you would never picture yourself doing. And you're full time right now? I'm full time. I've been full time for about two years. Wow. Yeah, two years. It's 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 been crazy, and I I, I admit I, I I had some opportunities to um, invest more time into it. So for example, um, when my wife got pregnant with our second child, because she's a real estate agent, she she doesn't have maternity leave here in Canada. And for those of you unfamiliar with Canada, we have like maternity leave for like eight or nine months. Where I think in the states it's only what like three months or like yeah, ten seconds. If that, right? Yeah, if that exactly. So mandatory. You're allowed nine months here in Canada. So because she's working for herself as an entrepreneur, as a real estate agent, she, you're not allowed to take off maternity leave. I mean, you can take it off if you want, but your business will suffer. So I was like, you know what? She's going to stay home anyways. I might as well use her maternity leave. Oh, so I decided wow. to use that nine months to jumpstart my YouTube career. And then um, basically from there, you know, it started growing. It wasn't growing fast at the time, but I saw an upward movement, which was more than enough for me to stick to it. And then, of course, um, here we are almost, what, 2014? So almost, almost yeah, four years. It'll be four years this month that I've been doing YouTube. Wow. That's yeah. uh, things lined up, man. That's not an opportunity most people get. So you definitely made the most of it because uh, I think when I, I think I originally met you, you were in like maybe 45, 46,000. Where's your, what's your channel number right now? Um, I'm just, I'm at 280,000 wow. right now, but like, um, 
Yeah, I think I was very small. Like I, I don't even whatever it was. I don't whatever thirty, forty thousand. It wasn't that big. But at the time, I was like, wow, this is amazing. Forty thousand subscribers. But realistically, today, like subscribers mean nothing. It's all about like what you feed the YouTube algorithm in order to get eyeballs on your videos now, instead of just um, getting more subscribers. But um, but yeah, it was. It's it's just been like this crazy experience and being a world that most normal, n most normal people would never think about. Like, no, no, like, you know, most people visit YouTube to search for a review or they'll search for, I don't know, something to fix in their house, but they don't understand that there's like this crazy world behind it of like these creators who are doing this day in day out making money or you know just doing it for their own passion and there's like this massive community behind it like it's just like a bizarro world and like when people ask me like oh that's your job <laughs> and then like, and they, they automatically think like how do you survive where does your money come from <laughs> you know they just they just get confused they're like okay this guy's like a bum <laughs> it's not as bad as it used to be though i think now i mean especially with the this next generation it seems like a lot more of them know about it and definitely want to make it a passion especially with the like vlogging community oh yeah for sure i mean like yeah the new generation they understand because like they're growing up with this but like you know people even people my age i'm what 37 like a lot of them still don't understand parents forget about it this is like alien to them but um but yeah like my kids for example you know are are growing up with youtube stars as some of their celebrities which is kind of scary at the same time but i mean that's the fact that's the fact right um you know there's a lot of documentaries surrounding like instagrammers and stuff like that about like you know kids just you know getting really attached to some of them and and they become their celebrities but it's definitely definitely a different time there'll always be like mainstream celebrities but now there's like a new type of social media celebrity which is obviously different but the same sort of concept yeah and and because of that now advertisers are starting to wake up to the influence that uh you know social media has indirect especially when it comes to youtube you know like kids or people are looking for a specific product you're not just marketing to a bunch of people you don't know if they're gonna you know care or not it's like it's a lot more companies are waking up which uh it's good it's good it's good for both the company and for the creator yeah i mean like if you take like every every company i talk to especially like i've I talked to a bunch of like uh, telecommunication companies here in canada they've all slashed their traditional broadcast budgets just because like like you said, you know, it's a general audience. You don't know who you're hitting. You don't know if they're just getting up and walking away from the commercial. Like you don't know if your ad is being consumed. Whereas, you know, you can go on YouTube and let's say you, you look up on box therapy, for example. Okay. He does tech, he unboxes them. He doesn't really go into a full review, but he kind of does an overview. It's a great way to target a specific niche, specific demographic to bring awareness to our product. Right. And I think, like you said, that's a lot more valuable than just basically yelling from a, a rooftop and hoping you know four or five or two thousand people see your ad right yeah so but then it also you know also spawns another problem too is like you know a lot of people are on youtube they are doing these paid reviews you know what about morals what about you know yes. your integrity yes which is a whole nother topic right which we um, should get into in a little bit but yeah i definitely agree yeah. <laughs> I, I i've Notice that the community as a whole has lost a lot of what it used to have as far as credibility, because now it seems like you have to put out a video that says, you know, review on it. And you only had a product for maybe a few hours at most. You know, it's like that's that's not a review. That's that's your initial impression. But in order to play the game, it's like I still can't get to that point where I'm just like, screw, I'm just going to put review on the title. It's if I only use the device for, you know, uh, not even a few days, not even a few hours. Like it takes me a few weeks before I actually understand what the product is. And then I consider it okay this is a review and not every product needs to be that way but you know a phone a lot can happen in in a week you know so it's it's one of those things that uh i don't know i i'm not a fan of uh the direction it's going but who am i no no for sure no i you know what carlos i 100 agree with you i mean like even even 
even publicists and like, you know, journalists that have more of like, a, I don't know, I'd say more of a reputation, even they're putting out reviews in like three days, like the Verge will get a product and then we'll have the review done in three to four days. And yeah, you're right. Like you have to kind of look at it both sides. You have to look at it on the, on the fact that if you don't put out the review in those three to four days, you're going to lose exposure because yep. the competition is going to do it. And two, because there's so much tech being released, you have to go from one thing to the next. That's hard to juggle two or three devices at the same time. So what I've kind of started doing instead of just doing like a review in three to four days is I'll just basically, I won't even write review in the, in the, in the, in the title. It'll just basically be my thoughts. Like for example, I released a video today called the OnePlus 6T, uh, the best phone for the money. I didn't even write review in the title because instead of focusing on like every single aspect of the phone, I can just talk about my experience with it so far and not get caught up in the whole review cycle. Also, I don't think I'm the best smartphone reviewer out there. So therefore I shouldn't invest all my time doing professional reviews. I think if you want like a long winded review, there's much better people that do it than than me. So I'd rather find something about the device that I, I like and don't like and talk about those specific experiences rather than going through an eight or 10 minute video and going through every single feature. Because if I do it, it's just not going to be as interesting exactly. as, yeah. as other reviewers, right? Yeah. So that's just my new approach to the and, way I do things. And but that's, I, I agree It's smart and it's smart. And I appreciate that because, and you can see that in the videos, you know what I mean? When someone says uh puts a title and it says review and all they're doing is reading specs that's not a review a review to at least in my opinion review is like how you use your experience when you know maybe you found features that no one else is talking about things like that that's a review reading specs out is just like uh anyone can do that i mean any joe and blow gets a device and there's always a quick start like i think there yeah. has to be more integrity in that area Oh, the worst is when I like see a new device being released and the person doesn't even have the phone yet and they're already doing a versus <laughs> video between two phones and they've never used the product. And it's basically just like they've copy and pasted two spec sheets beside each other and are going over the specs. Like yeah. I just I can't watch that. I just get I just go crazy. I just can't do it. <laughs> so you spoke about the algorithm. Like what what do you know? Or have found with the algorithm that helps you uh, when you're producing these videos. So, I mean, everyone has their theories about the algorithm on on how it works and stuff like that. But one thing that I've noticed and I can say for confidence is that you need to be following the trends. If you're never, if you're producing content that's not basically a trend, it's not going to get any eyeballs. It doesn't matter if you have. 300,000 viewers or 200,000 subscribers, it just won't get nearly as many eyeballs. Like I, I talked to other, a lot of other YouTubers and when they look at their stats, only like 1% of their audience is getting notifications, like yeah. 1%, yeah. which is, or less than 1% in some cases, you know, and it's frustrating because, you know, these people signed up to be part of rich channel and YouTube only serves them what they think they're going to like, you know, curated content, but who says YouTube does it best. I don't know if you can hear a noise outside that should go off in like 10 minutes, but, Sorry. um, but yeah, so if you're not following those trends and you're not hitting those to those hot topics, your channel will just not grow. It's just the way it is. And then there's other things that come into play, like did your video get enough audience retention in the first hour? If it did, then you know it's going to boost your, your video to other people. If it didn't, then it's probably just going to die over 24 hours. Um, other things too are like... Um, you know, did people find the thumbnail attractive? So it takes all these little variables, puts them together, and, and then decides whether or not your video is worthy to the universe. So that's why I, I always tell people, like I hate to say it, if you're going to start a YouTube channel, you need to find a way to be not clickbaity, but at least, at least hit the important trends, or you're going to find it very hard to grow. Yeah, and I, I definitely experienced that. Like I. Not being a full time YouTuber and not not being able to get uh, my hands on the latest and greatest. Yeah. When I put out a video, it's about something, you know, I don't want to say generic, but it's definitely not, you know, the newest phone or the newest TV or something like that. Only if I get it for myself, do I get the opportunity to review it in that aspect. Um, and I, I've definitely noticed a difference. Like when I got my A7 III, just putting out an unboxing video, just an unboxing, you know, excited video that got a ton of views where you know i get something that's maybe two or three years older 
unbox that and it's like yeah the numbers don't even don't even uh don't even oh, no, get yeah. half of that so yeah totally. it's, it's definitely a, it's definitely a game i still haven't figured out that's for sure yeah i mean like it's a tough game because like there's you know there's certain stuff that you want to review and you know you might be passionate about but then you feel kind of disappointed when you're not getting the views that you feel you should be getting and, and it could be the best video in the world you know um now obviously you know other other factors come into play too. Like if the topic is old, but yet you're still getting high audience retention, then it, you know YouTube might push the video up to to be more trendy, like in terms of like more eyeball seeing it. But um, you know it's really tough there, especially with people's attention spans shrinking, and this is like getting worse every single year. <laughs> um, it's brutal. So like it, you have to keep your videos short, sweet, and concise. And if you do a long video, which is fine. You have to make sure that at least, I don't know, the first portion of it is so addictive so that they like hit that 50% mark because you are watching a bigger video. It still counts for more watch time than let's say a smaller video, yeah. that, let's say is two or three minutes long. But, um, you know, obviously you, you have to like make sure it's just that much better to, to retain that attention. So it's tough. It's tough for a lot of people and people feel the frustration, you know, especially – other YouTubers who have four or 500,000 subscribers, some of them, you know, are noticing their views drop because, um, you know, they're, they're just not getting that, uh, attention they used to. So you all, I think the point is you always have to be adjusting your style. Yeah. Your, um, you have to make sure you're sticking to your personality and, um, you know, just let it come out. Cause if you don't, then people are going to see you right through that. And then you're just going to be basically the same person as everybody else. That is very, very true. Cause uh, I definitely noticed, you know, I, I, it's just from watching other people, like you gravitate to someone whose personality is genuine and you could tell they're not throwing on a big show. And then when you see someone who's not, nah, this is not who they really are. It's like a quick turn off. Like, nah, I don't want to watch this person. Oh, for sure. Like, for example, I'll use myself as an example. Like when I started off, um, I was like very serious, you know, I was like, you know, when I started off, I was so serious. I was like, I have to be professional. I have to keep an objective face. I have to look like stone cold, you know, so I'd have these reviews and they'd just be straightforward. And then sometimes I'd add some sort of comedic element in like a separate video, but it just didn't feel like me. Right. And then, you know, it took a couple of years to realize that like, it's okay to be you, you know, like there's an audience for you. Yeah. So, you know, now I'm throwing jokes in my videos. Now I'm acting like an immature retard because you know i'm immature inside so and, and there's a whole audience for that you know there's there's a whole audience that likes that sort of humor but also i'm still able to give the information at the same time so i think like i said yeah you're right you need you need to find your personality so what is i would say what is your favorite tech to review actually oh man um so Smartphones are the easiest for me just because I'm so used to them. They're not my favorite though anymore because there's just literally a new smartphone coming out every single week. Yeah. Um, I still think it's laptops. There's just something about laptops that I just love reviewing. And I think it's because I'm on a laptop more than I'm on a smartphone. So you have that like connection to it. So I'd probably say laptops, definitely laptops. What's the best laptop you've reviewed uh, this year? Oh man, that's a tough question. There's so I mean, it depends what category. Like for gaming laptops, um, yeah, productivity. You, I would say so. Productivity. Okay, so for productivity, for me, it's a toss. Okay, so I I predominantly use Windows laptops, so I can't really speak for MacBooks. But um, for for a Windows productivity laptop, for someone who's like a creator, content creator, for me, it's either the Razer Blade 15 or the Lenovo X1 Extreme. Those are like my two go-to laptops for whenever I'm traveling and want to do content creation. And the Razer, that's the six core? Yeah, they're both six. So both both of those uh, products I mentioned are six core. They're 8750H processors. They both, ha uh, one has a GTX 1060 and the other one has a 1050 Ti Max-Q. But they're both powerful enough that you can edit 4K video no problem. Um, the Lenovo one is a little bit lighter, so it's easier to travel with. But they're both fairly light in general. So like if you're someone who travels a lot but needs that power, both of those laptops will, will definitely take you, ha have you covered basically. What's um what's your daily driver right now as far as uh, phone? Oh, okay. So um right now I'm using the Pixel 3 XL because I'm working on my little review and I'm using the Mate 20 Pro. But whenever I'm not using those phones, so those are like my daily drivers for the next two weeks. But whenever I'm not using those phones, I use an iPhone 10s and sometimes the OnePlus 6T. 
What is it about the iOS experience that you like the most? So it's not, so I'll be honest with you. Like I like the Android operating system better. Like I like the way they do deal with notifications. I just like, you know, the slight little customization things that I can do to it, even though it's not like a big deal. I just like the, this, I find it actually more simplistic than iOS, but the reason why I stick to iOS over Android a lot of the time is because of the app experience. Yeah. There's still a lot of apps that just run better on iOS. Instagram stories look better for those that use Snapchat, even Snapchats, Snapchat or snaps look better. Um, there's like even little applications that I use like a light meter, which I can't get on Android. It's called, um, light spectrum pro, which basically measures the white balance. Yeah. You can't, there's no app for it on Android. So like, it's like a quick and dirty fix if I'm like on it, if I'm shooting something and I need to quickly measure Kelvin, you know? Yeah. Um, so like, and there's also like a little things too. Like I, I actually really enjoy using the Apple watch. Like there's no other mm. smartwatch out there that can come even close to it. So it's those little things. I know for most people it's like iMessage. That's what keeps them locked in. Yeah. For me, it's all the other, for me, it's more so the app experience. I would How say about I'm, yourself? I'm, I'm in the same exact situation. Like, Coming from being an Android user, I would say the majority of my life, even though I had Apple products, like I had the iPad, I had, I was using a Mac mini at one point. Um, I even have the MacBook Pro. Like, so I always use the computers, but I always preferred the Android side of thing until the whole Note 8 explosion battery stuff happened. I was forced because I'm more of a two year upgrade kind of guy. I'm not really into the, except for this year's, I guess this year, well, next year will be the first while upgrade um, because I did the whole iPhone plan, but that's besides the point. Um, So when that, when that happened with the note, cause that was like my favorite phone of all time. I had the note four. It was like note five. I think it was the one that started blowing up on people. Note seven. Okay. The note seven. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, I was due for the upgrade. I was going to go there and then all that stuff started happening. So I was like, well, you know, I'm going to take this opportunity and try the Apple ecosystem as far as the phone and stuff. So I was like, all right, started using it. And right away, I noticed a huge difference when it came to the majority of the apps that I used just ran better. Like even like, like you said, Instagram, the processing power and taking a photo and, and just, it just came out cleaner. And I was like, damn, what the hell? Like I've been missing this this whole time. Like what the <laughs> so people, true. I heard people talk about it. I just didn't, you know, until you actually get into it. And I'm not like a fanboy or nothing like that. No, but of course not. at this point, like I don't I can't see myself leaving the iPhone just because it is. It integrates with everything. Like every my MacBook Pro is my phone rings. All of a sudden I'm on that. It's that starts ringing. Like it's the little things that they do that uh that keep people locked in and, and having to pay those extra prices. Not that, you know, saying you can't get that with the you know Windows or Android because I still to this day I love I I do my majority of my video editing is on my custom PC and I love it, you know. Uh, I play games here and there, but for the most part, just being able to use Photoshop and all that stuff and 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 just be on the go with my MacBook Pro. I just, I, I prefer that. I am very curious though, because I know that Premiere products do run better on Windows. So something like the Razer or the Dell kind of has me interested, but I don't know, man. It's going to be hard to give up some of the functionalities <laughs> between, you know, your, your Apple Watch opens up your, your phone, like the PC. It's crazy. It's just... The little no, things. man, I hear you. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, like that's that's one of the. I mean, yeah, I'll be honest with you. If I wasn't editing video, and if I wasn't like, like I, I love gaming, like I game a lot on the PC. If I wasn't into those two things, I would probably test out a MacBook and just use that. But um, I hear you. Like, I understand. Like, a lot of people like that co- continuity, being able to go transition between your 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 MacBook or your iPad and your iPhone. It, it's just like a nice little little touch. And yes, you can kind of do it with Windows, but it's just not nearly as smooth or cohesive. Yep. And you're still missing a lot of those small little features that make it so awesome. Um, I mean, yeah. At the end of the day, like, I would love to only use an Android phone. I really would, just because I. I like, I legit like Android better, but until, until developers, and again, this is not like, this is not the specific phone's fault. It's developers faults for not 
you know, basically spending as much time or providing as much effort to create a better app experience on Android. And, and I don't blame them either. There's just so many Android phones yep. to develop for. So it's really hard to do. Whereas on the iPhone, you have one iPhone. These are, you know, you have this certain APKs that you can use and there's, you make more money on the Apple store. So I understand why their, their, their time and efforts put there first, Yeah, but you know what, that's just life. So unfortunately, because I'm a, I'm a, a tech reviewer. I'm, I'm, I'm privileged enough that I can carry two phones, but man, if I wasn't a tech reviewer, I'd probably just buy an iPhone and I hate to say it. And a lot of people don't like to hear that because you know, there's a lot of the YouTube community is very Android passionate, but you know, oh, if, yeah. I'm, <laughs> if I'm holding on a phone for two to three years, you know, which is what most people do. I want it to run the best. I want performance to be the best. I want updates the second it comes out. And, and that's the reason why you'd buy an iPhone. I mean, you could do that with the Pixel, but like there's just been so many quality control issues with the Pixel 3 and Google's still, still new at this. So until that gets a little bit better, I still think, you know, for, for, for people who like to keep their devices for three years, the iPhone is still the best bet. Yeah, it, uh, one of the things that I always recommend people now, having used it for, you know, the last two and a half years, it's like I, I try to recommend it to people I know that like, you don't understand this will make your life a lot better. Just use this. You I, Like I try to tell my wife all the time, like, I think you would be the perfect, you know, the iPhone would be perfect in your life. And she's like, no, nah, I want my Android. And I'm like, all right, I'm just <laughs> telling you, you don't need, you, you wonder why your pictures don't always come out so clean. <laughs> Part of it is a processing that has to do with the phones. And I'm like. Yeah. yeah. One day well, you'll, I, you'll figure so it out. So funny you mentioned that because my wife is the same way. Like, she, but she hasn't used Instagram stories and stuff, right? So yeah. she's she doesn't really care. But like, I mean, yes, the like the Pixel has a better camera than the iPhone. But once you once you post that picture on Instagram stories, it just doesn't look the same. Um, but like, she refuses as well to switch to an iPhone. You know, <laughs> she was a Pixel fan girl. Now she's using the P20 Pro and she loves that. And she, I've tried giving her an iPhone. I'm like, let's do iMessage. Let's be cool and iMessage each other. She's like, nope. I'm like, okay, I see how it is. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. So, what, I mean, what do you see your channel like doing in the next year or two? Like, what do you, you know, what is the goals that you might have set? Or do you even set goals or you just keep, making video and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, honestly, I would love to say that like I'm some organized person who has like 10 year goals, but no, I don't. I'm just basically, I'm just basically trying to survive and grow. So just pumping out as many videos as possible. And I think in the short term is be able, being able to hire more people to work with me so that I can continue putting out more content while not reducing the quality of the content. Um, yes. And I'd also like to, uh, I think, sorry, let me, let, let me rephrase that. I'd like to continue what I'm doing to grow faster, but I'd also like to diversify more as much as I love YouTube. It's, it's basically my biggest, it's my biggest, um, place for, for audience. Yeah. I don't want all my eggs to be in one basket. Right. right. So Ideally, I'd like to, you know, to grow my Instagram to get it a little bit bigger. I, so I have that security. I'd like to grow Twitch a little bit bigger. So I have that security. So if one of these massive, you know, companies have issues or start screwing over creators, at least I'm not susceptible to only one. Yeah. And I'll be protected, you know? Yep. So I think that's the main goal. Basically set up some sort of diversified portfolio for my audience or for my influence and uh, continue to grow so that I have leverage in the event that um, one of these platforms decides to, 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 to go down or has issues. Are you, are you a, a like, obviously you're doing tech, but are you into cameras and all that stuff? So I'm not like a, I'm not like a gearhead. Like it's not, I know there's a lot of YouTubers. I know you're, I know you're really into gear, yeah. uh, but there's a lot of like hardcore YouTubers who love camera tech. And I, 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 I love camera tech too, but I'm just not as passionate about it as let's say, you know, a new smartphone or laptop. And that's because I look more at cameras just as a tool to get the video done. Sure. And I, th and I think that's just because I don't like go out and shoot photography with it all the time and like get the urge to make like these little videos for the fun of it. So I think that's more of the reason why I just want stuff to just work and mm. yet still have good quality, you know? 
That being so like, said, what are you using to <laughs> film your <laughs> gear? I knew that was the next question. <laughs> um, so for camera gear, I'm basically when I so I guess I'll give you a little history. When I first started, I started with some crappy camcorder. Then I jumped ship to a Canon 70D. Then from there, I went to Panasonic. I used the G7 for like a year. Um, now I use three cameras. I basically have um, a Sony A7S that like never moves. And it's being connected to a monitor so I can get 4K. So that's like my A-roll cam. And then my second cam, which is my top-down cam, I have a Sony A6500. Okay. And then the third camera, which is actually not my camera. I'm actually, I don't know if you, do you know who Ash Taylor is? Big fan of Ash. So Ash basically lives in Canada now. He actually lives five minutes down the street from me. Oh wow! He comes in, every, yeah. He comes in every once in a while and helps me out. So he lets me borrow his A7S II. So I use that as my uh, B-roll camera. And the goal eventually is to replace, well, to buy an A7S III whenever Sony decides to uh, announce that. So I don't so, care about okay. going red. I don't care about buying the most expensive Canon camera. I kind of like the Sony cameras just because I'm so used to it. I mean, they shoot great 4K video. Um, and for what I do, it's way more than enough. Yeah. How about yourself? You're using Sony too, I believe. Oh yeah. Yeah. I have, uh, I have, uh, the a 6,300. That's my top down camera now. Um, I have the 6,500, which is like vlogging slash whatever else I need to do slash B cam. And then my main camera is a seven three. You're not, you haven't looked into the a seven three or is it just, you think that the a seven S three is going to be, you, you want all that 4k 60 and 10 bit internal, all that stuff. Is that what it is? I have zero. I, I think the a seven three is like, would be more than good enough for me. Like, I think it's probably perfect, but I don't know. I'm not in a rush to buy a camera. Right. I so gotcha. I, f I figure I'd wait for the a A7S III to come out, see if there's anything that, you know, I think I could use to improve my production or my workflow. If there's not, and I don't think it's going to be a big upgrade, then I'll just probably buy an a 7 III. Because, yeah. I mean, what's, what, why waste the money on, I th it's probably going to be like $5,000 or for Oh, well, for you, yeah, because you're in Canada, definitely it's going to be Oh, that yeah, that's much. right, $5,000 Canadian. So <laughs> what, probably $3,000 US, I'm guessing, yeah. is usually what those I cameras was, go for. I would say it was probably whatever they marked the the R3, which probably was like 32 34 something like that. It'll be in that same ballpark. Um but yeah, I get, I get it. I understand. Uh, I, the thing with that one is I don't know if they're going to be coming out with that until maybe we may may hear something in the beginning of the new year. But I I just don't see it. I just don't see it. I think that the way that the A7 III has done so well, I mean, it's hard to even get. It. I think it's still like back order in most places. They're wow. just going to milk it until they, you know, until, you know, because... Canon and Nikon didn't put enough pressure on them. The oh, only yeah. camera that actually put pressure on them was the, I want to say the Fuji uh, X-T3. And that's a, you know, super 35 sensor. So I don't think they're really like, you know, if they rush a new camera, it'll probably be the successor to the 6500. Just yeah, to compete the, with that's that. That's right. One. You're correct. The 6700, whatever they call yeah, it. Yeah, right? 67 or 7000. Nobody knows, knows, but everybody's yeah. kind of like suggesting something like that. But more or less, I think that's what it is because they're, they're saying that it might be like a miniature A9. So it, it's going to be pretty crazy. Yeah, man. Sony's really, really, really doing such a good job in that, for that price range. Like no one's even close to them. Like I, I, was, I went hands on with um, the Nikon Z7. Yeah. And it's a pretty good camera. I mean, like, you know, if you're if you're a Nikon fan and you wanted a mirrorless camera that shoots pretty good video, it's it's you know, it's worth it. But you know, for anyone else that does video, I think you're still better off buying a Sony or a Canon or you know, one of those. Yeah, you know? Yeah. But um no, it's it's interesting. It's it's very interesting. I just I just don't want to I sometimes I get too much into it and I'm like, wait, I gotta back off for a second. <laughs> Cause I'm letting myself get into it. And you know, they're expensive. It's not like oh, yeah. you know. A, a little tech product you buy and that's it like these products are well, how much is the a7 three two thousand dollars or twenty two hundred dollars two thousand two thousand for yeah. us probably twenty two for you guys um and you also have to think about the glass and stuff what in fact what kind of uh glass are you using for your your cameras so um so my main my main b-roll glass is the g g series um 24 to 70 so mm. g gm series yeah the like the the 2.8 Sony's yeah, yeah the, GM series yeah 
this is 24 to 70. I have for my top down cam, I use like a 28 to 70, but it's like the cheap Sony lens. It used to be a kit lens on one of their older oh, cameras. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's but still, it's, fine. it's still, no, it's a good, that's a really good, this is what people don't understand. Like, I know Fuji has a, like probably the best kit lens, but as far as kit lenses goes, I'm coming from when I used to shoot Canon. Like yeah. Sony's kit lenses are actually really damn good. You can go yeah. a long way with them. Yeah, and like no one notices the difference. And like we you, we actually use it for most of our gimbal work just because it's so light and small. For and the autofocus is so amazing. Yeah, and then the other lens I have lying around is um, the, actually I have it right here. This is the 10 to 18. Okay, yeah. So if I need like a wider shot. And then um, I have the old Sigma 18 to 35, which I never use anymore just because I don't need it. And then what else? That's it. That's all I have. I mean, yeah. And I'm happy. I have something for, oh, and I have an 85 millimeter for like portraits. Ah, the, the 85, the, the Sony 85? Yeah, the Sony 1.8. Yeah, I have that. Millimeter. Oof, I love it's that. It's a nice, it's a, such a nice lens. So Man. good. Man, and for the price compared to oh. like the uh, baddest or even the G, G, uh, G Master one. Oh my God. I yeah. was like, wow, I got this. I started seeing reviews on it. And I was like, ah, I I'm going to have to get this. And I got <laughs> it. And man, that's one of the lenses I just don't regret ever getting, man. It's just a Me too. beautiful lens. Ugh. So nice. I love, I, I'm thinking about picking up a couple more primes, but like, honestly, it's, 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 it's expensive. So, I mean, I'm not in a rush, but like, you notice when you use the 85 millimeter, it just looks so much more clean than even the GM series 24 to 70 when you're shooting something. Like it's oh, yeah. just, it's just awesome. But yeah, I'm trying not to get too caught up in the lens situation. The only other lens that I think I need to buy is probably a macro lens at some point. Yeah. But, um, besides that, like, that that's that's my gear you know that's what i use on a pretty much a daily basis to to shoot my videos do you have a a schedule that you you go by or is it again just whenever you know you have your video ideas and you just start pumping them out so yeah like um i try to shoot a video i try to shoot a roll every day so um so like for example if ash is in the studio which he co usually comes like once or twice a week i'll try to do like three videos like just my a-roll recordings like i'll do three in one day and then we'll just shoot b-roll for one and then you know i'll cut them up we'll hear uh, he'll edit them so basically i try to get four videos out a week wow right? that's sometimes awesome. we, sometimes we do five sometimes we do three but the goal is to like always hit four i think this week i've gotten out um tuesday i've gotten two out this week i have another one coming up tomorrow and then the ipad then i have a live stream every friday so that that gives me some buffer time because on Friday I don't have to worry about releasing a video. I just do my live stream and that's it. Right? Is that live you, now that live stream you do it on Twitch, right? No, no, I do that on so I have two live streams. Okay. Uh, the one on YouTube, which I do every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern time, and then I have one on Twitch, which I've been like very lazy, I haven't been consistent at all, where I used to like basically test out the laptops that I unbox on the live stream on Twitch to show gaming performance. But um, I stopped doing that just because the setup I have right now at home doesn't work too well with hooking up laptops and streaming it. Yeah. So I'm going to re rejig that. But what I do now is just basically game and my audience comes on and they'll, they'll talk to me and we'll just like, you know, shoot the shit and basically have a conversation. Yeah, I, I, I want to do that. But man, my channel in, goes in so many different directions. I think that's what hurts me because <laughs> I just do like what I want to do. You know, I don't have a particular format for, all right, this is what we're going to do. Plus, <laughs> I just don't have time to 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 um, to be able to just pump videos out. I wish I could. But I at this time in my life, just with my work schedule and just being a, a you know a husband and a, and a father to my two kids, it's like. When I find these little nuggets in the day, that's when I try to just <laughs> squeeze out a video here and there. And then, yeah, you no, know, you, then life just happens and you get lazy and it's like, oh, man, let me just enjoy watching some Netflix or something today. 
<laughs> Listen, man, if I was working nine to five or if I had a job, I would not be putting out the amount of videos that I'm doing right now. I'd be doing like one video a week and, you know, and, and be a, it'd be a struggle because, you know, as you know, it doesn't take five minutes to create a five minute video. It sometimes takes two days. It sometimes takes a whole day, oh, you know, yeah. like depending on the type of content you're putting out. Um, so, yeah, I know I get it. I get why people um, have issues being consistent or are putting out videos all the time. I just, I just think like it's anything else. Like you sometimes just have to, I don't know. It just, it just all depends like how badly you want it. Yeah. Um, how much you care. Um, is, is it something you can see yourself doing forever or is this more of a passion? If it's just a passion, then you should only put out videos whenever you want to. Cause then if you start putting it out every single day or twice a week or three times a week, then it starts to feel like a job, uh, a job, <laughs> yeah. an obligation, uh, and then then you just lose that motivation and and that passion towards it. So, in your situation, if you're just having fun doing it, then like just stick to that because that's that's the best part about creating. You know. Yep. What's your favorite kind of content to make, actually? Um, honestly, I don't do many vlogs, but I've done a couple. I wish I could do more of those. That kind of stuff is fun. Uh, walk and talks. I, so I used to do a lot of walk and talks where basically I'd have a gimbal following me and I'd just do like a short two, three minute video on like one specific thing I, I like or don't like about a certain product. And that was just a lot of fun to do because we'd go out to a different location. We would literally do it in two takes and it was just like a funny, fast paced video. Um, yeah, those are probably my favorite videos to do. Uh, typical reviews, like, you know, like your standard review, those are like my least favorite to do just because I hate shooting B-roll. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's why I got the whole top-down setup going on just so I can kind of reduce the amount of B-roll I have to do so I can s streamline the process of putting out more videos. But um, yeah, basically, I, like, I just like having a conversation. So as, as much as I can keep it towards that, those are the videos I like making the most. So what is the top-down setup look like? Um, so basically I have, you know, your typical, I use a cork table. So I, I just like the way the brown looks as like an accent color compared to like your, your most typical tables. Yeah. Um, you know, we have, you know, basically like, um, what are they called? Not like a, you know, like the photography stands, like that hold those like sheets of different colors. So we have oh, one you're of those. Talking about, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, no, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. So basically that goes over the table so I can hang a camera and then, you know, I have a couple of obviously the two cameras. I have two show guns that go into, um, into the cameras and then obviously they save to the SSDs. That takes a and lot then, of room though, right? Yeah. My dad, this desk is huge. Like ugh, it's, it's a pretty big space, but not a pretty big space. I think the room's about, I don't know, 120 square feet. So the room is just dedicated to that. There's nothing else in here but blankets and sound panels to reduce the amount of echo. Yep. But it's just basically a table, the camera, a camera and tripod that never moves, a light that never moves, a microphone that never moves, like nothing moves in here. And I even have tape or Ash put all this tape on the floor so that like I know exactly where everything goes in case one day someone knocks it over or, or moves it by accident. <laughs> that's efficient though that's very that's a good little system to have yeah because um, like i mean uh, you know like if you're doing this full time or if you're, you're trying to pump out two three videos a week like you don't want to waste time resetting up the camera and making sure the lighting's okay and and making sure you know you're in the correct position because that just introduces um more opportunities for human error right yeah I've been, I've done videos where I like uh, the microphone is off and it's like, shit, maybe I should, you know, like, and you waste all that time. So if I have like two buttons to push and I just go, then it just takes that worry out of the way. And, and there's obviously less error for any, any situations that come up. I, yeah, I, I started uh, doing more top down stuff. I was like trying to go the cheapest route possible. I didn't want to do kind of how you have that. Like, you know, it's almost like the green screen uh thing yeah. right yeah and i was like i just don't have the room for that so i kept like trying to be creative and i was using like mic stands and then hooking up my camera there and then it was just like a pain in the man it was a pain in the ass really and then one day i was online i was just on one of those uh amazon like oh, let's see what i can get you know and i came across like i what i think is the perfect top-down use which is the grooming 
a dog grooming uh, stand, which okay. clamps on each side of your table and and, and it, you can adjust it up and down. And the, the material is like really it's not cheap um, and it's perfect. And it's only like 55, 60 bucks. And I had it and it was just like sitting and you know how you start stacking boxes up. You forget that you have it. So I had yeah. it for like two or three weeks. And then um, this guy on YouTube happened to like make the video. And I was like, that's the damn thing I got. I still haven't used it. So I put it oh together and it, dude, I'll send you a link and it might like change your, like the way you do it. Cause it, it's so much more compact. It's, it's meant for dog grooming but it has holes on top and, and you can extend the bar. It's, it's just an amazing little top down thing. I, I probably should make a video just like a behind the scenes, how, you know, I use it. And, um, it's just for 55 bucks, dude, this thing is amazing. It has quarter 20. It's, it's just like, it, it's almost like it was meant for us. But yeah, these I'm groomers right are using Amazon. it. I'm, just, I'm looking it up right now. I'm looking at a picture of a dog. That's actually like a really smart idea. Dude, and the build quality, <laughs> like when I when I originally saw it, I thought it was going to be like like the ch- uh, like very flimsy material. But no, it's it's almost like a soft steel. So there's some, he- I don't want to say it's heft to it, but it definitely feels very sturdy. And it just clamps on to each side. And if you, like, I would say if you needed to extend it, you could probably like go to Home Depot or something and just buy an extra longer to if, if you have a longer, longer desk, like the one I, the desk I have is not very, not very big. It's like one of those uh, regular size ones from Ikea and it's just, yeah. man, it's awesome. I love it. I got, I'm going to, I'm hyped myself. Up. I'm about to do a Dude, video Dude, make a it. video out of it. It's like, <laughs> that is like a really, that could be such a great video. And it's, it's a smart idea because when I, you know, like it's so you know, much real- money for getting like the real ones. Oh yeah. And this one does more and cuz I forgot who who did a video cuz I've been, you know, part of you know, doing good videos and having it's like what you did is having everything set for you. All you have to do is press play, turn your lights on and go. And I came across like I realized like a lot of stuff I I I stopped myself from making videos because it's a process sometimes like you know you got to set up I want a top down angle so now I have to get all awkward and put my hands over here because I'm putting my monopod in front of me and it just feels so uh, it just and then when I came across this thing after seeing like hundreds of reviews of different little DIY stuff which some of them cost you know Oh my God, like a hundred, 200, some thousands of dollars. And it's like, man, I don't got that. And when I came across this one, I was, it was like a breakthrough happened. Like this was meant for us. This is what I need. <laughs> no, man, whatever, whatever works. And like, to be honest, who like the fact that someone thought of this is fantastic. Like, yeah, I'm looking at here in Canada. Like, for example, it's like, there's one for like 50 bucks as well, or 80 bucks, depending on the quality you want. And that would like work perfectly for a small desk. You know, yeah. I mean, you, you could also buy like a C stand as well and have that go over your desk, but that costs like two hundred dollars for the well, I don't know, maybe one hundred and fifty in the U.S. for the C stand if you want a good one, and then you know, the clamp and everything. You're looking at about two hundred bucks here. This just get a dog stand, throw it on top. Yep, it's, it's like gold. That's gold, man. And that's like the thing that. why I stopped from my I stopped myself from getting the C clamp is because that still takes a lot of room. Like the legs fold out and it's like just oh, extra. It's yeah. So yes, these stamps work great. If you want to put the $150 down, you have a little bit of room to move, but this, it just stays on the desk. You don't have to touch it. And when you're ready to shoot, you're, you're ready to shoot. It's just like, Oh man, anyone, I'm going to leave a link down in the description for anyone who's interested. Yeah, you should. <laughs> and the dog and, and, and the dog that goes with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah it's and it's super easy to set up it's uh it's cool but man i, I feel like we've uh, been chatting it up i don't want to take too much more of your time man i really no worries, appreciate man. you uh you know hanging out and being a part of uh my podcast and uh hopefully we can do this again um Love just to. let everybody know where they can uh find you i'm gonna leave links to all your uh stuff down in the description anyways but let people know where they can find you and what they can expect from uh, from your next few videos. 
Yeah, man. So thanks again for having me on. It was great to catch up. Um, they can find me on Twitter at Matt Moniz, M-O-N-I-Z, or on YouTube at Matthew Moniz with the number one at the end. And of course, um, I have a video coming out t- tomorrow on the Pixel 3, the iPad Pro. So always tons of content coming. I've got a couple laptops on the weekend. So if you're around, come check that out. But thank you so much for having me on, Carlos. It's been awesome. Yes, it definitely has, guys. I will leave links to his channel his uh social media is down in the description so me please go check him out and uh that's about it thanks everybody for hanging out with us and we'll see you next time